The remake of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door just recently came out for the Switch, and the reception has been really good. But as good of a remake as this is, there's some who may wish the game performed better, given its limitations, which may make one turn towards emulation to play this game. But is that actually worth it? Would the Thousand Year Door experience actually be better on an emulator? I'm gonna dissect that right now in this video by running the game both on Yuzu and Ryujinx. So, let's get started. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door the remake of the classic GameCube title recently got released for the Switch. After a few decades of this game being a cult classic, and after a decade of some rather mediocre Paper Mario titles, sticker star anyone? Everything that made Thousand Year Door good is present right here in this remake. It has the partner system, the RPG mechanics, being able to level up with star points, and a fun and engaging storyline with its own set of original characters. But despite how good this remake ended up being, it does still have a few setbacks, mainly within the performance aspect. The game runs at a locked 30 frames per second, which is a bit of a far cry from the original GameCube title, which runs at a very smooth 60 frames per second. Some people were hoping that the Switch remake would maintain that smooth frame rate, but sadly, that is not the case. On top of that, the game runs at a resolution of 900p when docked on the Switch. While in handheld mode, the game runs at 640p, basically sub-HD. So in other words, the lower frame rate and resolution can pretty much be chalked up to hardware limitations, which if anything, further shows how dated the Switch is becoming to the point where the Switch 2 really just can't get here soon enough. The current Switch is running off of a mobile chipset from 2015, which, although it was powerful for its time, has become dated, and the fact that it's even struggling with a remake of a GameCube title from 2004 kind of shows this. Granted, this has been a very polished remake, but still, the 3D papercraft environment looks absolutely gorgeous and further emphasizes Paper Mario's form of being presented in a world of, well, paper. Like, seriously, this is actually so satisfying, smashing these paper bushes with your hammer. The game is still fantastic, and it's a remake that I would recommend. Still, with all these setbacks in performance, this may make people want to run this game at a smoother performance, and at 60 frames per second. However, there is the question of whether the game could actually run properly through emulation. I mean, after all, Nintendo did recently issue a DMCA takedown on the Yuzu emulator, and while the emulator itself is still obtainable, depending on where you know, where you know how to look, the overall project has been discontinued, and as a result, that means games like Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door wouldn't have been optimized on an emulator that, like that. So how does it actually run? And that is what I'm gonna be demonstrating right now in this video. But before I do, I first will give the legal disclaimer that this video is not meant to endorse piracy. And the copy of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door that I will be running off of does not come from a pirated copy, because if you own a legitimate backup of this, then you could actually run this legally on an emulator. And in my particular case, what I use to make a backup of this is that I use the Make Switch cartridge dumper, plug that in, connect it to my computer, and that makes a legitimate backup of it. So for that, let's get started. So I'll start with the Yuzu emulator. Yes, the emulator that Nintendo issued a DMCA takedown on, and I will start with the game's standard frame rate. One thing I noticed immediately is the amount of visual glitches that is displayed throughout. 
there would be moments where the ground would be glitching out constantly to the point where it just becomes distracting. And there's also moments where the game's models would be flashing for no reason. And then there's moments that the Yuzu emulator doesn't seem to quite handle certain lighting effects, such as the sun shown in the game's opening sequence. I mean, just look at those black artifacts. Yikes. The Yuzu emulator also doesn't seem to handle certain animations all that well, such as the boat turning animation during the game's prologue. Uh, yikes? Yeah, having the boat cut like that really ruins the visual appeal of these type of animations, as they add another layer of whimsy to this game, giving the game more of a paper type of style. Now, the frame rate runs just fine, even with those visual glitches, so if it ends there, then I would have said that this experience would have been playable. But before I get to the deal breaker of Yuzu, I first want to take a look at the very thing that people have turned towards emulation for, and that is the 60 FPS mod. Yes, I tried it out, and well, it kind of leaves a bit to be desired. Now the animations themselves do look really good when running in 60 frames per second, and it really does make the experience feel closer to the GameCube original. And yeah, running it like this, I do actually wish the game ran at that frame rate on the Switch. But unfortunately, and the downside to this, is that the higher frame rate also means that the game is a lot more prone to slowdowns. A lot of times I would have Mario walk around, and I'm really feeling these slowdowns. It's especially noticeable when you have Mario jump. It looks a bit floaty when he does so. And things especially gets rough when you get into major battles. And well, another major thing that sticks out is how delayed the sound emulation feels. Here is a quick comparison. And when there's a lot of characters on screen at once, then that's where you really start to feel a bit of slowdown. Just getting through much of Goombella's dialogue in that frame rate really kind of feels a bit sluggish. There's some very noticeable moments where the game would show some signs of stutter, especially as you transition from one area to another as the loading screen pops up. That can get a bit annoying. A lot of it, I think, is because of how the emulation tends to struggle when loading up new assets. And as a result of that, the st audio struggles every single time you load into another screen. And when it fully loads up, there's a bit of frame rate lag for about maybe a couple seconds or so. But unfortunately, even if you were to put up with all of that, including the visual glitches and the frame rate, then the moment you go down the warp pipe to Underground Rogue Port, then that's when you get to this game-breaking moment, where the screen is completely black. Like, you can control the characters, but you cannot see a single damn thing once you get to Underground Rogue Port. That, ladies and gentlemen, is where I check out of the Yuzu emulator completely, both for the 60 FPS mod and the regular frame rate, because, well, at that point, it's just unplayable. Yeah, it's clear that a lot of work would need to be done with Yuzu's emulation, something that would more likely have to happen with another emulator, seeing as how Nintendo completely struck away Yuzu. And given how hellbent they are at striking down Switch emulators, I'm not sure if it is all that likely we will see others try to take on the Switch emulation scene, at least at the moment anyway. But as rough as the frame rate can be on Yuzu, it's actually a whole lot worse when you try running the game on Ryu Jinx. Everything from the cutscenes to when you're actually in Rogue Port 
The frame stutters. A lot. And I mean a lot. The game runs really slow, and it gets worse depending on how much detail there is on screen. Like, running the game at 60 FPS on Yuzu, the sound delay is also present, with the amount of slowdown there is. But if it runs like this at even the basic frame rate, well, how does it run in 60 FPS? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's even worse. It is way, way worse. I'm talking, it's practically unplayable. The game stutters so hard with this type of frame rate, and getting anywhere in the game takes at least three times as long than if you were to run the game normally. I mean, just look at how slow this is. Yeah, if you're looking for the most tedious way possible to play Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, then run the 60 FPS mod on Ryu Jinx. It's probably gonna take you about maybe an hour or so for you to even reach Professor Frankly. I'm I I, I can't. I'm sorry. I just can't. I this is unplayable. I'm I'm done with it. I'm done running it like this. So in the end. What do I think is the final verdict as far as running Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door on an emulator? Well, unfortunately, there isn't even really much of a stable way to run this game. I would have said Yuzu at the basic frame rate, if you can get past all the visual glitches and inaccuracies, but the part where the screen goes completely black in Underground Rogue Port is where I completely check out of that emulator. I guess maybe if you run this on Ryu Jinx at the basic frame rate, you could get a little bit more of a playable experience. I mean, the frame rate is still unstable, but Ryu Jinx is still around, so things could still technically get patched at any time. But either way, I think I would stick to just playing this on the Switch. I don't think I'm willing to play this on an emulator anytime soon. Especially since even the 60 FPS mods, which is kind of a drawing factor to playing this through emulation, is more likely just going to lead to slowdown on both emulators, especially on Ryu Jinx. But now, what do you guys think? Would you run Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door on a Switch emulator, or would you rather just stick to running this on the Switch itself? Or hell, would you even just stick to the GameCube original? Let me know in the comments below, and subscribe to DSL Media for more content. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.